Tamatea Dusky Sound is a beautiful, remote part of New Zealand and the site of many pioneering interactions by Europeans. Home now to wildlife and occasional tourists, a team from Toy 2 Otago Settlers Museum and Heritage New Zealand, with the help of local tour operator Fjord and Expeditions, sets out on a mission of rediscovery. The aim is to see what remains from that historic era and share these remarkable stories of what was, for both Māori and European, the furthest frontier. The explorers were quickly followed by sealers, looking to exploit the rich seal rookeries that Cook had reported on New Zealand's southern coast. Seal skins were in huge demand in the 1790s, as one of the few commodities that China would accept from Britain in exchange for tea. British ships transporting convicts to New South Wales were looking for return cargoes that could be traded in Canton for tea, silk and spices to take back to Europe. The commercial exploitation of Fjordan seals for their skins was thus part of a lucrative international trading route and became New Zealand's first export commodity, with China as its first market. Cook's detailed chart of Dusky Sound made this the obvious first port of call, and the first sealing party arrived here in Dusky Sound on the 6th of November 1792, a party of 12 men coming from Captain William Raven's ship Britannia out of Sydney or Port Jackson, with supplies sufficient to stay here 12 months. Raven looked all around the sound for a suitable spot to drop off his men, noting freshly cut timber at Facile Harbour and here at Pickersgill Harbour, which is probably evidence of Vancouver's stopover the previous year. They also noted a Maori camp, seeing its smoke from its fires in Breaksea Island. But when they landed to investigate, the inhabitants took off into the bush and no further contact was made. Raven eventually chose a site here at Luncheon Cove on Anchor Island, so named by Captain Cook after a delicious lunchtime meal of crayfish he'd enjoyed here 19 years earlier. Now the first priority for Raven's party was to erect a shelter for the sealing gang, so they cleared a space in the bush, possibly here, and erected a quite substantial building. It was 12 metres long, 5.5 metres wide, 4.5 metres high, with a thatched roof, and together with a support building, one for drying the seal skins. This was the first permanent European structure ever erected in New Zealand, of all places here. Raven's second mate, William Leith, a carpenter, was left in charge of the sealing gang, and they were left with sufficient timber, iron and cordage to build themselves a small boat, and instructed to do so against the possibility of the Britannia not being able to return to pick them up. And then, the Britannia sailed away, leaving this small band of intrepid adventurers, all volunteers, to fend for themselves here. The closest point of civilization was the convict settlement at Port Jackson or modern-day Sydney. And just as the ship was sailing away, they were struck with a substantial earthquake to begin their time here in Dusky Sound. Over the next 10 months, the sealing gang collected 4,500 seal skins. Now they did that by the pretty simple process of just walking through a rookery and brutally smacking the seal on the snout, killing it, skinning it, drying it. Meanwhile, their pet cat wandered freely through the bush, no doubt feasting mightily on the bird life, just as cat on the Resolution cook ship had done uh, a few years before. And then finally, they almost had visitors. Unbelievable, Malaspina's Spanish expedition sailed into Dusky Sound, intending to enter, but unfortunately the winds blew up and it was pushed further north, so there was no meeting, but the two parties were so close to each other, wouldn't that have been an incredible meeting in this extremely isolated spot at the bottom of the world? A month after Malaspina's almost visit, Captain Raven returned on the Britannia to pick up his crew, along with their valuable collection of skins. They had almost completed the 70-ton schooner he had left them instructions to make, and it was now left here on the stocks in Luncheon Cove. This pile of rocks is thought to be where they rested the hull as they were constructing it, and just inland from here is a pit where they'd set up 
the blacksmith's forge and also a steam box to bend the planks. Now that almost completed boat would not be forgotten and Dusky Sound was now well on the radar of many mariners in Sydney. Because of its early association with Cook and other early European interactions, Luncheon Cove remains a popular spot for heritage advocates. Sarah Gallagher is representing Heritage New Zealand on this expedition. She explains the importance and archaeological potential of areas like this around Tamatea Dusky Sound. We've got an historic area um, which is quite large. There's 53 archaeological sites within that historic area as well, which range from early European sites to, of course, earlier Māori sites. Although this is a very remote place, it's a very fragile place. Clearly, people can come and go here quite easily, and uh, that's why in our report we haven't detailed where a lot of the sites are because they are prone to fosking, which is illegal against, you know, in our act and the uh, Protected Objects Act. Um, so I think there's potential for a lot more archaeology to be found here to enrich everyone's knowledge. I think that would be fantastic. Ultimately, Raven's crew didn't acquire the number of seal skins originally hoped for and therefore their expedition was not immediately followed up on. However, the site was now well known, and when prospects for the industry improved in 1803, sailing gangs were again dispatched from Sydney for Dusky Sound and the sub-Antarctic islands of New Zealand. Sadly, this boom decimated the seal population of Dusky Sound and wider Fiordland. Sealing was not completely prohibited by the government, in fact, until 1947. Today, perhaps ironically, Luncheon Cove, the place where it all began, is now a thriving seal rookery as the population continues to rebuild under their now protected status. Back in 1794, Raven's party departed a seemingly deserted dusky sound bound for Sydney. And it wouldn't be long before there were other visitors here in dusky sound many more and for a considerably longer. On the next episode of Furthest Frontier, Tales from Tamatea Dusky Sound, the first known European shipwreck in New Zealand leaves a group of men, women and children Stranded in Dusky Sound. So some of them were actually going to be stranded here and at Luncheon Cove for almost two years. Imagine how that must have felt. 18 months awesome loneliness, incessant rainfall and maddening sandflies. And our maritime archaeologists venture beneath the waves to see what remains of the wreck. Uh, the Endeavour shipwreck is New Zealand's earliest European shipwreck and it's the only physical remains just from that time period. So to be able to dive in it, and actually record that part of the history is just, you know, it's a, it's a huge honour and a real privilege. <laughs>